Hey folks, how you doing? Hopefully you're all having a great day today. Part two of the home gym series, but before I begin, uh, I got the sniffles. I got some type of sinus crud going on. We went on a week-long vacation, uh, rented a hotel uh, down in the Gulf of Mexico, just had a really fun out on the beach kind of a vacation. Relatively inexpensive, all things considered, vacation. The last, second to last day we were there, my daughter, two-year-old daughter, picked up some type of bug, just the cold or whatever. And, uh, you know, we're all sharing a hotel room, so it was just a matter of time before me and my wife got it. I got it. I'm starting to get over it, but I just want to preface that because I sound like crap. And I apologize if I <clears throat> randomly cough. Part two of this home gym series, uh, in part one, I just mainly wanted to convey that you don't necessarily need to have a bunch of fancy equipment, a bunch of fancy stuff to, to get a really good workout. And especially if you um, kind of emulate some of the strongman type movements, uh, you've probably seen the strongman competition on, on television. Uh, but if not, Google strongman exercises. And the premise of that is just lift something heavy and move. Basically, there's many different ways to lift stuff, the stuff that's heavy. There's many random items you probably already have around your house that are heavy that you can pick up and just move. Uh, and that's, that'll, that'll really help you in your day-to-day -day activities. You're just picking stuff up and moving, and then when you interact in your day-to-day -day routine, uh, everything just becomes a little bit easier, right? I think so anyway. It's kind of like the same premise of uh, running with ankle weights or something like that. And then you take the ankle weights off and it's like, wow, your feet feel like feathers. Uh, growing up, I used to play a lot of street hockey in Southeast Michigan and I'm, I had my rollerblades on all the time. That was my main mode of transportation to friend's house and, and playing street hockey and whatnot. And then at the end of the day, when you're just exhausted, you take those rollerblades off finally. And it's just like your feet are like feathers. Well, the same thing is with, you know, strongman type of movements. Pick stuff up that's heavy and move with it. And then the rest of your day-to-day -day routine will get easier. Uh, so that was basic part one type stuff of this series. Part two, what I'm going to show you today is uh, I picked up a couple things that are were, were really good deals, were free, and also the opposite end of that spectrum. Uh, cool gadgets, stuff that is like falls into the buy once, cry once type of category, as you probably heard me talk about previously with woodworking tools. Uh, but anyway, just to run through real quick, I got a squat rack, some tires, a trap bar HD, and some plates. So let me bring you in closer and we'll start with the squat rack. This is kind of an old school style squat rack. It's, it's uh, homemade. I don't think it's manufactured by anybody. It looks, it looks to be homemade anyway. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep it forever, but it's definitely a really good start. I found this on Facebook Marketplace for $50, and I was already going to that location, that city, the next city over. Uh, so it was a convenient trip. I didn't have to make an extra mileage trip to pick it up. So I did pick it up. It's 50 bucks, like I said. Uh, I, I, always, I, I wanted a squat rack in here of some kind um, to... to basically not kill myself with doing like a bench press movement. So this flat bar right here, if I put a bench down in the middle, which I have to make a bench still, if I put a bench down in the middle, uh, I can adjust the elevation of the bench so that on the decline of the bench press movement, I'm not interacting with these horizontal pieces. But if it slips out of my hand, these, these horizontal pieces will save me from, you know, the bar killing me basically, right? I don't recommend anybody you do the bench press movement by yourself, uh, especially if you're going heavy, because it, it, accidents happen, it can slip, and you can really hurt yourself. Um, so <clears throat> this area right here, you could do the bench press movement, and of course there's different tiers up here uh, for a squat bar. My only complaint with this, and, and the only thing that's, um, only th thing that is making me believe that I won't hold on to this long term, I may end up either making or buying something that doesn't have a couple of shortcomings that this one does have, but it's a good start, like I said, is the distance in between here is, is a little bit narrow. The trap bar that I have right now, it currently <clears throat> won't fit because uh, it's, this is a little bit too narrow, like I said. So it doesn't, doesn't uh, fit this, but uh, what is the measurement here? I think it's 42 inches center to center. 42 inches center to center. And then also, like, this is a 7-foot level to uh, simulate a 7-foot barbell, so I knew where to place it left and right, so it's not going to hit my toolbox. But if you're in here for a squat, 
my hands in their natural, where my hands naturally want to go is where this bar is. So I may bump my hands a little bit, bringing it back. Another thing that I don't like about it is the bottom is not level. I've, I flipped it upside down and put a straight edge on the bottom and it's, it's got a little bit of a bend to it. So on the front side, if you step on this bar, it's got a quite a bit of unevenness to the bottom. There's a bottom bow on these horizontal pieces. I don't know how that would uh, translate to when you're putting heavy weight up here and if, if it wiggles around or something, I don't know. Uh, that may not even be a problem at all. But uh, like I said, I'm going to use this until I, I'm, I'm going to use it for experience to figure out some of its shortcomings, the things that I'd like to change. And I can use that information to either build or buy something else. This was 50 bucks. There's, I mean, you, you can get 50 bucks out of this from scrap metal, basically. So um, I have no problem selling this down the road, but it'll, it'll, uh, it'll do a good job in the meantime. Uh, what else do I have? I also have <clears throat> some tires over here. So let me bring you to the tires. You can get these tires for free. Just call around any tire shop, especially if you go a little bit outside the city limits. Most of the, like the somewhat rural tire shops will have tractor tires, right? More rural areas have more X or more uh, opportunity to work on a tractor. So you're gonna have a greater opportunity to get these type of tires or like a, a, a heavy equipment supplier, heavy equipment um, repair shop or something like that. They'll probably have these tires and Tire shops have to pay to dispose of these tires. So being able to just give them to somebody else who's gonna reuse them for free is something that they have absolutely no problem doing. So I called around to a couple of shops and found one that had a, a mound of tires to pick from. And then I ran into the dilemma of, well, crap, I don't wanna make this trip multiple times. So what size tire do I wanna get? I have no idea. They're, they were covered in mud and goo, so not, not like I wanna go out there and kind of flip them around and, and, and actually do a workout out there to figure out which size that I want. So I did the what I call the, the, the safe route, and I got three tires of different sizes so that I can, like I said, they're free, so I can and figure out which ones I like, which ones are worth keeping, and then I could just put one of these on, you know, Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace as a strongman tire and it's already cleaned up, ready to be used. I'm sure if somebody will come pick it up for free, no problem at all. So I got these three tires and I think I'm going to let this middle one go. Uh, this is like a semi-trailer tire. This is a, a bigger tractor tire. This one is, is a little bit of a challenge to flip. Uh, I also realized that... Um, flipping tires is there's a safe way and a dangerous way to do it. Uh, you don't want to deadlift the front of the tire. You want to back up a little bit and power through it to, to roll it kind of and, and push through the tire as you're flipping. And because of that, this one's just a little bit too short. It's short in this direction and it's not really as that wide. So you, there's not much leverage. I, I can't get much leverage on this, this shorter one. So I'm going to keep this one probably get rid of this one. And then this semi-trailer tire has been incredibly fun and useful. Flipping this, beating the crap out of that one. Anybody who has a wood burning stove in their house and have, has used uh, wood to heat as a primary source of heat for their house in the wintertime knows that chopping wood is a heck of an exercise. Uh, so much that after one year of doing it, um, after one year of our household doing it in 10th or 11th grade, I guess, uh, we just quit splitting wood and my, and my stepdad just started buying cords of wood that were already split rather than logs. Um, it's, it's quite a bit of a workout. My grandpa once told my mom, he said, split your own firewood, you'll warm up twice. And I thought that was just a, an amazing quote. I love that. Uh, anyway, splitting firewood is a, is a fantastic workout, but the most annoying thing about splitting firewood, if you're doing it for a workout, is after you split a piece, then you have to go chase the pieces down. Of course, you can like, there's different things you can do, like put a bunch of wood inside of a tire and start splitting the wood so the, the tire stops the splits from flying all over the place. Uh, but basically, if you're splitting wood, there's always some time where you have to stop and go chase the wood. Using a sledgehammer on a tire is the same situation, like you're splitting wood, but you don't have to go chasing anything. And it is so much fun. This, I've, I've come out here basically every day since I've had this tire uh, and, and just beat the crap out of it. It is so much fun. 
it is just it's exhausting it's a really good core workout especially if you have a little bit of a twist and also you can work on your left and right handed stuff so i'm right handed and there's a lot of stuff that i do left-handed to try and purposefully get some some muscle memory left-handed like using a, a garden rake to rake leaves it's there's always a like a a comfortable way to do it and then that the, the, the left-handed or the opposite hand is the the funky awkward way right you can still do it but it just feels awkward and funky so when i'm raking leaves i'll try and focus on the awkward side well same with this right-handed is natural and easy to me left-handed is not and after just a few days it's all the same so with beating a tire uh, one thing to note is I put this on the edge of this horse stall mat to protect the floor in the event that I miss the front of it and hit the floor which I've already done and uh, you can't see it but right in front of this tire is a big chip out of my floor which is kind of like uh, didn't want to didn't want to do that uh, but anyway <clears throat> With a sledgehammer, you can get a really good workout doing that for repetition. Uh, something like uh, EMOM timer, every minute on the minute to do cycles. So one of the things that I was doing with uh, EMOM is uh, <clears throat> 10 swings with the sledgehammer, five left, five right, go back and forth left and right, left and right, and then do something with the trap bar, uh, some type of movement, like an overhead press, something different, and that's one cycle and you can get done say in 30 seconds whatever you have left over uh, till the next cycle starts is your recovery time and as it starts to go on and on and on your recovery time gets lower and lower and lower because you're taking more time because you're getting exhausted uh, anyway sludge hammer on a tire is a lot of fun and it is physically exhausting it's actually really good workout for your core me anyway because i'm trying to go overhead so i'm twisting with it on both sides and it's a really good workout. I feel it the most in my core, my midsection. And if I'm bending my knees to really kind of crank down on it, you can start to feel it on my lats as I'm pulling down. Anyway, it's a really, really good workout. I started moving the camera and thought of something else that's important to mention. If you do this, I will recommend not hitting the narrow face on the tire hit the wide face the reason being is the first day i was doing this i was trying to use my my wrist my grip strength to just hold it the best i could and if i'm off on just a little bit of an angle on impact it's going to take that angle uh, i guess because of the the bounciness of the tire and, and the transferring of the energy back and it's going to twist it flat really fast and a couple times i jarred my wrist really bad and ow it kind of hurt so um flat face is way better and then also there's different spots on the tire to hit that get different feedback um, hitting here at the edge is you have a wall of tread so it's going to be the most firm of a hit which is where i'm trying to aim all the time but of course i don't hit where i aim all the time and I hit somewhere out here sometime keep in mind that the more forward you are the more likely you are to get all the impact on the the handle and that's where you get axes and sledgehammers that break if all the impact goes right here rather than right here. It's a tire, so there's a lot of um, energy absorption. So I don't think you're gonna have heads of these breaking off as easily, but that's just something to note. Hit it on the flat face so it doesn't twist on you and, and tweak your, your wrist. Another use for this particular tire, on my, on my list of stuff that I wanted to make for this home gym, uh, one of those was, or on the list, was a sled, a sled to pull around. So you can get all kinds of uh, different exercises by pulling a sled in various different ways. Well, after having this here, it's quite obvious that you can pull this around just as well, add some weight to the center of it, and boom, you got an inexpensive sled. There's no cost in this, and if it wears out, which will, I, I don't see myself ever wearing out the rubber just by dragging this thing around here, but if it wears out, then another one is free. Uh, so, so I've already drilled a hole in the center of the tread somewhere to help drain the water. I could put an eye bolt through it with some washers, bolt that on, and then I have an attachment point to attach a rope. I've got a rope on order from Amazon, and uh, at that point, uh, I could build a center platform of some kind to sit inside there. Excuse me. A center platform to sit inside there to add weight to it. And if I attach a rope to this thing, start dragging it around with some weight on top of it, my daughter's gonna see that and she's instantly gonna wanna ride it. 
so I could pull her around with it too, and that's just nothing but fun. Fun for everybody. I'll get a good workout pulling her around, and she'll think it's just the most cool thing in the world. Guarantee you that's what's going to happen. So yeah, a, a tire is a very inexpensive way to get uh, a, a sled, and you just have to basically buy the rope and the hardware to attach it. And you can do, like I said, all kinds of stuff with it. You could do like overhead or arm over arm, I think is what it's called, arm over arm pulling to where you're alternating left and right, uh, anchoring your feet, sitting on your butt, anchoring your feet, pulling it, you know. You can do uh, uh, with two strands of the rope, throw it over your shoulders and pull it uh, away from you, right? So the tires to your back, pulling it forward, good leg workout. Uh, you can sit down and use it kind of like a rowing machine where you put in both hands at the same time and pulling to you and you're, you're rowing like that kind of thing. Um, a very versatile free tire, you know, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm excited to keep experimenting with this thing. I picked up the tires and the squat rack and the sledgehammer and this black mat you see on the floor all in the same day. So uh, the squat rack was 50 bucks. This sludge hammer was uh, $30, $29.99. And then this horse stall mat, which is what this is, was $48, if I'm not mistaken. Now I got this horse stall mat as a deadlift platform for this trap bar. This definitely falls into the buy once, cry once category. It's a departure from everything else that I've shown you. Everything else that I've shown you is, is budget stuff, inexpensive stuff that you can get by with. Just make all kinds of cool, creative workouts with them. This is something that's very specific. And like I said, buy once, cry once type of thing. There's so much that you can do with it. Uh, and it's rated at a ridiculous high capacity. I think like 1500 pounds. I think that's what it is. Um, it, way more than what I'll ever lift, so this thing should outlast me, but you can do so much with it. It's a trap bar, so if you're not familiar with what that is, it's a, a typical barbell. You can't escape it. It's always in front of you if you're, you know, like deadlifting, and uh, you can't put the, the, the center of mass directly in line with your body because, well, there's a bar there. It physically can't go through you, and that's where these come into play, the, these type of trap bars. Uh, they put uh, it, it's open in the middle, right? So the the center of mass can be directly in line, directly in line with your body. And most of these that you've probably seen have uh, a bar on the front and back rather than center, so that you stand inside of. Uh, this one is what's called an open-ended trap bar, so it's only on one side and not both sides. Uh, so you can do all kinds of stuff with this that you can't do with a typical trap bar. For example, like. Uh, holding it with the bar in front. Let me spin this around real quick. Actually, I'll just flip it around. So with the bar in front, you can stand up and do, you know, like uh, one-legged squats or something like that where the back bar would typically get in the way. It's not going to get in the way. Stuff like that, you could use it for overhead presses. You could do it bent over rows. Uh, with a typical trap bar with the front and back part of the bar, uh, you, you can't really get in front of it or you can't really lean over for like bent over rows. This one you can. You can do so much with that. And it's just, I'm just touching on the capabilities of it. Uh, this is a, <clears throat> getting out of breath because of this sinus crap. This is a Kabuki Trap Bar HD. And if you go to the Kabuki Strength Instagram page, I think they got it on their website too. Uh, but anyway, they've got an Instagram post with like nine different exercises, and you can do way more than just those nine. Just a good example of how versatile this thing is. Uh, anyway, uh, the things that I, the two, the three things that I like about this thing the most. Number one is it's open-ended, so you're not going to have another bar to to kind of na navigate and deal with. Number two, it's got two different handle positions, and on this particular one, I've got two different handle sizes. So I've got on the high grips. So these are the standard grips, and if I flip this back around. These are now the high grips. And on these, I have the two inch love handles is what they're called, the two inch love handles, the bigger handles, and the, the wider the handle, the wider diameter bar, the greater the bar diameter that you have to actually hold on to, the more you're gonna train your forearm grip as you're training whatever else you're training. So if you're doing like farmer's carries, I'll use these uh, wider pieces and 
basically the failure point at that point for me, my failure point is my grip strength, not necessarily the holding of the actual weight, you know, long term or whatever. Uh, so you can train weaknesses rather than training something. You can train your weaknesses. Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Getting scatterbrained. Another cool thing about this trap bar is the uh, kickstand. So on a typical barbell or, or trap bar or anything like that, it's set up like this while the weights are touching the floor. So if you need to change plates or add more, subtract, whatever you got to do, you have to either use a jack of some kind, an auxiliary jack to lift this up just a little bit off the floor to slide plates on or off, or you have to, to kind of like do it yourself, manually lift it up as you're sliding stuff on and off. These jacks allow you to roll onto them. And now these are, as you see this spinning, they're not touching the floor, which makes it easy to, put, put, or to add or subtract plates. So that's a super handy feature. On the same order of the trap bar, I got some plates to go with it, obviously. And uh, these are Kabuki as well. Uh, what's cool about these is there's, there's a lot of companies nowadays that are, are making their plates in the United States, which is great. If you, I, I live here in the United States, so buy American, right? Uh, but this is uh, made from recycled material and it's a carbon neutral facility. If I'm not mistaken, the, the facility, the foundry that makes these is, is not necessarily carbon neutral. They're actually a net negative carbon, I think. Uh, I'll put a correction on the screen if I'm wrong. But anyway, it's really nice to see um, uh, recycled steel. So you're not, you're, we're reusing some material and we're not destroying the environment while doing so. So that's really, really cool. The problem that I've run into with these plates is I don't have a place to store them now. As you saw earlier, I had some plates on this mat. I've got some plates up there. I've got some plates up against the wall. I've got some over here. I don't have a, a, a good place to store them just yet. So the first project is going to be a, a plate rack storage solution. My initial plan was to build something up against the wall uh, on either side of the squat rack, and that way they'll be kind of convenient to load and unload the barbell. But I think I want to uh, build a cart of some kind instead. The cart will be um, probably 24 inch by 24 inch square, some heavy duty five inch casters that'll really hold the weight. Uh, I ordered some casters that are 440 pound capacity each, so I should be able to put as much weight in there. Uh, all the weight that I'm going to be using in this, in this space anyway um, should be no problem at all. But I want to build this cabinet in such a way that it'll, it'll store not only the plates that I have, but also some more plates uh, because uh, I don't know the number of plates. I forget off the top of my head the number of plates that I have. Uh, the weight of all the plates that I have, but with them completely loaded up on this, this trap bar, this whole thing is uh, 321 pounds. I remember that, 321. 321 pounds, and this trap bar is 66 pounds. So subtract that, and that's how many plates that I have. But, but with 321 pounds on here, I can do a one rep max deadlift, and I don't, I mean, it's, it's tough, but it's not, I don't think that's my one rep max. So I want to get some more plates in here to, um, to, to really see how much I can lift and also to have some setup for the trap bar and as also the, the barbell that I'm going to put up here so I'm not constantly moving stuff back and forth at the different stations. So the cart will have capacity for not only these plates but for extra weight and I also want to make the cart have a solid platform on the top that I could use for the sandbag. So it'll be the same height as this board right here and I can use it for the sandbags uh, and break down this scaffold and put it in storage kind of where it belongs because this is taking up a lot of unnecessary space. I think that's the plan. That's, 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 that's all I have. No, actually, that's no, not all I have. I forgot. I have a jump rope. I've always sucked at using a jump rope. I've never been able to use a jump rope for more than like 10 or 15 seconds and a smack it into my shins and it hurts. <laughs> uh, so... I've never really put an effort into getting better at a jump rope. It's a good exercise. It's a really good warm-up exercise. I think so for lower body stuff. Uh, so I got a decent jump rope and I've been working on it for the past three or four days and I still suck at it, but I'm gonna get better. Uh, kind of challenging myself to, to get better with that. I think that's it for home gym part two. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm going to keep building on this series and keep building stuff for the home gym and keep getting stronger and hopefully healthier as, as I go. You guys take care. Have a great day. 
and I'll talk to you in the next video.